This is a video about the Dassault Rafale, one of the most modern and effective of the generation 4.5 of Delta Canard fighters. This is the third part of a series of two videos. However, before starting, since it is a French military plane and in compliance with the current YouTube policies about discussing the French military, I have an obligation to show you this. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with us till the end, because the stuff that we discuss here, you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. In the late 70s, France was well ahead with the development of the Mirage 2000, which will enter service in 1984. However, they were already thinking to its successor. This may seem premature, but since the aerospace project may well take 20 or 25 years to go from the original idea to the first delivery, it was just the right time. When Marcel Dassault looked around, he realized that actually the moment was the right one. Not only France needed to think to the future plane for the Air Force and the Navy, but Germany would be in need of a replacement for the A Phantom II, the United Kingdom of the Phantom FG Mark I and FG Mark II, Sweden was thinking to a vegan successor, and the American Grumman Corporation was in search of a successful project after the F-14. As an added bonus, France and Great Britain had to replace the Jaguar, and Italy the F-104S. So, all the conditions were there for a large international project that could harness the best of the Western technology and create a family of airframes of unprecedented success. Thousands of units would have been produced and it would have outperformed even the best Soviet counterparts, building on the synergy of both sides of the Atlantic. So, exactly as it could have been expected in this extremely favorable context, everybody went its own way. And perhaps this was for the best, because France clung to some key technologies, uh, developed new ones, and the result is an excellent machine. Expensive maybe, but really excellent in many areas. The Rafale is a Delta Canard multi-role combat aircraft. If you want to know why this configuration was a natural choice and why it is so common nowadays, there are two entire videos that cover this in detail. Obviously, we could talk for hours about a complex combat aircraft like the Rafale, so in this series of videos, we focus on the plane capabilities in the latest configuration, the F3 and the 4F4, rather than its development and design. So the Rafale empty weight is around 10 tons and the maximum takeoff weight is around 24 tons. As a comparison, the Eurofighter Typhoon is about 10% heavier but has the same maximum takeoff weight. The Gripen is much lighter with less than 7 tons empty and about 14 tons maximum takeoff weight. The F-35 is heavier being around 13 tons empty and 31 tons tons maximum takeoff, but this varies uh, between the different versions A, B or C. So the Rafale is about in the middle of the range. The engines are two Snecma M88 turbofan with a thrust of about 50 kN each, or 5 tons if you are as old as I am. The thrust to weight ratio is difficult to estimate because it depends heavily from the quantity of fuel and the weapon load. So a single number basically makes no sense. It seems reasonable to say that in a typical air-to-air -air configuration, the thrust to weight ratio is among the best in the category, similar to the Eurofighter and better than the Gripen and the F-35. As usual, it is difficult to speak about the plane range because it depends from the payload and the fuel. But what is particular about this plane is the large quantity of fuel that can be embarked much higher than the Eurofighter and the Gripen. 
The Rafale may carry three large drop tanks and two conformal fuel tanks above the fuselage. And apparently the plane has little difficulties in lugging them around. Rafales have been often seen in uh, air-to-ground missions with two or three large drop tanks. Also the fair range is outstanding as the plane can fly missions up to 12 hours long, obviously with um, the help of air refueling. I believe that this is a deliberate choice derived by the particular French requirement. France needs to be able to operate autonomously in northern and western Africa where the distances are measured in thousands of kilometers and the complex logistics available within the NATO context well, it's simply not there. In the same way, the naval version may need to fly to and from the carrier, potentially very far into the ocean. Another outstanding feature is the super cruise, that is the capability of flying supersonic with no afterburner. The Rafale can super cruise around Mach 1.4 in a clean configuration. It is roughly the same performance of the Eurofighter, but is much slower than the F-22 and quicker than the Gripen, while basically the F-35 is not designed to super cruise. The Rafale has three variants. The Rafale C is a single seater, the Rafale B is a two seat, and the Rafale M is the carrier-based single seat variant. For the non-French speaking audience, C stands for Chasseur Hunter, B stands for B plus two seat, M stands for Marine, that is carrier bay. The M variant was the first to be developed and it was rushed in service to replace the hopelessly obsolete Etendard and F8 cruisers of the Marine Nationale. L'Armée de l'Air originally planned to a proportion of two thirds C and one third B. After the Gulf War in 1991, the French observed that the two-seat planes, particularly in the air-to-ground roles, behaved substantially better than the single-seaters. This led to the decision of inverting the proportion between the two variants and producing more bees. The plane is omni-roll, that is a multi-roll platform with some degree of specialization among the pilots, so all the variants have the same equipment if they are updated at the same standard. The F1 standard was rushed in service in 2001 with the first 10 units delivered to the French Navy to hastily replace the cruisers, as we have already said. It was basically a simplified air-to-air -air variant with just a fraction of the weapons and the system that were originally planned. Now all the airframes have been upgraded to the F3 standard. The F2 standard was the first completely operational standard and enter service uh, in 2005. The F3 is the current standard and a substantial improvement on the F2. Deliveries of new F3 airframes uh, started in 2018 and today all the F2s have been ported to the F3 standard. The F4 standard is currently being developed and it is expected to enter service in 2025. The Rafale panoply of weapons is a balanced mix of French and foreign weapons. In the air to air configuration, the main weapon is the Mika missile. It is a medium range weapon which is built in two variants one with an active radar homing seeker, the other with an infrared seeker. So while the sensors and the guidance are considered to be aligned with the top of the technology currently available, the weapon is kinematically slightly inferior to the AMRAM version D, which is the reference point for every Western missile. To overcome this problem, the Rafale integrates the multinational Meteor missile, which is probably the kinematically most effective weapon in the world. Quite curiously, the Meteor Seeker is derived from the Aster surface to air missile Seeker. In turn, the Aster Seeker was developed together the Seekers of the Mika family. So basically everything is related. Mika and Meteor will coexist for the foreseeable future, even because while the Mika is relatively cheap, the Meteor is very expensive and it can be procured in limited numbers. For example, France has in service 1200 Mikas, but just a couple of 100 meteors. A common air to air configuration is two meteor, two radar guided Mika, and two infrared guided Mika. 
It may be interesting to know that the Mika demonstrated a capability that was never demonstrated before by any air-to-air -air missile as far as I know. 11th of June 2007, a Rafale fired a Mika over the shoulder against a target following the plane with the targeting solution provided by another Rafale through the Link 16 data link. Obviously, an auto cannon could not be missing from the armament, and in fact, the plane has a 30mm cannon with only 125 rounds, which are enough for 6 to 8 bursts. It is rumored that the original specification stated that during the air to air combat, the cannon could fire autonomously without depending from the pilot reflexes, but this capability has never been implemented. According to the French doctrine, the Rafale covers three different roles in respect to air-to-ground operations. Generic air-to-ground, deep strike and anti-ship. The plane is certified for the Mark 82 BLU-1311, BLU-126 BLU bombs in the dumb version, but curiously France is not employing them as such. They are always used as the warhead of a paveway laser guided kit, obviously American built, or for the French AASM hammer kit. This is a peculiar kit because it has a rocket booster to enhance the range and it also uses more than a single guidance system. The base version has an inertial plus GPS guidance, which requires the target coordinates to be entered as part of the solution. The infrared version has an infrared sensor to uh, complement the inertial GPS guidance and it gives the weapon the capability to attack moving targets like vehicles. The laser guided version works like the paveway but it has a longer range thanks to the booster. These weapons have been reported to hit moving targets at 70 km distance in ideal conditions. To identify ground targets, create fire solution and laser designate them if needed, the Rafale needs external pods. The French Air Force uses the Thales Damocles, but several other solutions have been integrated, even non-French or American ones. For deep strike, two cruise missiles are currently certified with the Rafale. The MBDA Apache is mostly an airfield interdiction weapon with a range of about 200 km. The Scalp Ege the French version of the British Storm Shadow is a cruise missile with a range of about 600 km with a heavy warhead to attack high value targets deep in the enemy territory. In addition, there is the ASMPA missile, which is a long range nuclear cruise missile, which is part of the so called pre strategic nuclear forces. Curiously, all three weapons are built by MBDA and they have a quite a large level of commonality. Finally, in an anti-ship role, the plane carries the Exocet AM39 Block 2 Mod 2. The longevity of this weapon is really outstanding since it was used by the Argentinian and the Falklands and during the Iran vs. Iraq war and the results has always been excellent. Well, not if you were the receiving game actually. In the early afternoon of the 19th of March 2011, the French president Nicolas Sarkozy appeared on the national TV for an important announcement. France was going to war. Following a United Nations resolution, the French military forces were going to establish a no-fly zone over Libya. Even before Sarkozy's speech, the gears of the French military machine were already turning. At the airbase of Saint-Dizier, a flight of eight Rafale was being prepared for their mission. They took off from the single runway, left the woods and the hills of the Haute-Marne behind and turned south, toward the Mediterranean. After meeting a couple of times with the tankers, the pilots started to see the Libyan coast appearing at the horizon. The air defenses were intact. 
the Libyan Air Force was intact and both were alert and they were expecting an attack. The Rafals entered the Libyan airspace, destroyed a number of vehicles and tanks being part of the Libyan ground forces, shot down a plane, patrolled Western Libya's sky for a few hours and left unscathed. The Americans and the British will start their operations the following day, but not before having launched about 120 cruise missiles during the night, not before having rendered the Libyan air defenses and the Libyan air force inoperative. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. So this is the second video dedicated to the Dassault Rafale. Today we are going to discuss what makes this plane so peculiar and effective. The story that we told at the beginning epitomizes how the French do things differently. The United States and the rest of NATO approaches an air campaign in a rather predictable way. The beginning of the operations is dedicated to destroying the opponents, our defenses and neutralizing the air force. No piloted platform enters the contested airspace if the enemy's air defenses and air forces are not severely degraded, or the platform features some form of stealthiness. No risk is taken unless there are some very particular high-value targets that need to be neutralized, and even so, very reluctantly. The French do it differently. They do not have specialized air defense suppression weapons, and they do not have dedicated electronic warfare platforms. This is the reason why the Rafale packs an unusual punch from this point of view. The French trust the Spectra suite, the built-in electronic warfare suite, to the point of changing the tactics and ignoring the enemy air defenses like they did in Libya. However, let's start from the beginning. Despite the fact that the Rafale is not a stealth plane, a number of measures to reduce the radar cross-section have been taken, particularly from the frontal aspect. The engine air ducts hide the compressor and radar absorber materials have been used extensively inside the duct and on the most reflective parts of the plane. Since most of the structure of the plane is made of composites, Unconfirmed news report that the same radar absorbing materials are used behind the composites to screen the bulk of the metallic mass of the plane. And the cockpit has the classic gold film coverage to avoid the radar reflection from the inside. So while the radar cross section is definitely high and not even comparable with a real stealth plane, it is probably lower than the competitors and this may help in a contested airspace. The other particular element is the data fusion. The French developed a modular architecture and the core systems are formed by a group of modular data processing units. Their software can be easily updated and they perform the core navigation and combat functions, continuously integrating all the data and generating a unified visualization on the cockpit screens and the HUD. The Rafale is one of the few platforms that perform true data fusion. The norm for many four generation planes is to have one screen for each system. One screen shows the radar, the other screen the radar warning receiver, and so on. During the myriad of updates that these planes have received, at some point they may receive a data integration or data fusion package. In this case, the data from all the systems are shown on the same screen, but if the same target is spotted by the radar and the radar warning receiver, the screen shows two different tracks. And this can be very confusing for the pilot who doesn't know how to interpret them. There are various solutions to this problem, but the Rafale is probably the first operational platform with the computing power and the algorithm to deduplicate the tracks. It shows a single coherent picture 
drawn on screen in eye pleasing pastel colors because hey we are French but this is not the end through the link 16 data link the computer may receive data from either platforms like other Rafals, OWAX or even ground stations or even ground units these data are automatically integrated to provide a sort of God's view of the battlefield. This is the same feature that is believed to be one of the main, if not the main quantum leap ahead of the F-35. But as you can see, the French have been there already. To be fair, the F-35 uses a stealth directional data link safer and definitely more discreet than the general purpose Link 16 used by the Rafale. But the feature is there nonetheless. The level of integration is such that the whole designation process is streamlined to the point that to attack a ground target only two clicks are necessary. So the plane receives the mission from the OWAX. The pilot reviews the missions and clicks a button on the screen to accept. No radio chatter is required. If the mission is accepted, the weapons are automatically prepared and programmed and the pilot only needs to fly to an attack position. Just clears the computer to engage with another click on the screen and everything else, including the release and the eventual guidance of the weapons, is automatic. The main Rafale sensors are two, the RBE-2 AESA radar and the OSF Erst. The RBA-2 is an AESA radar, relatively powerful, which is believed to be able to intercept a non-stealth fighter-sized track up to 240 kilometers. It performs all the functions of a modern radar, including guiding up to 6 mica against as many targets at the same time. Curiously, despite the integration with the Meteor, which would allow a two-way data link, only a one-way data link has been implemented. The infrared search and track is a credit of good performance and good tolerance to the atmospheric disturbances. It works in two distinct bands, 3.325 and 8 to 12 micron, integrating the two images for the presentation. Estimates, estimates say that in ideal conditions it can track a fighter-sized target closing toward the plane, so not showing the engines, up to 100 kilometers. The infrared search and track is augmented by a TV camera that let the pilot have a recognizable image of the usual fighter-sized target up to 50 kilometers of distance. This is extremely important because the rules of engagement in modern day scenarios often require a visual identification of the target before firing. If the visual identification is made at a distance, it is still possible to use the full range of the air-to-air -air weapons. If the pilot needs to be in visual range and pretty close to identify the target, well, he has basically given up one of the potential advantages. Finally, the TV camera integrates a laser telemeter well, to measure distances, but is also supposed to be used to guide the infrared version of the MICAS at distances beyond the visual range. The Spectra Self Protection Suite is believed to be one of the most advanced in the world. The external components are three radar warning sensors, each one covering about 120 degrees, three laser warning sensors with roughly the same coverage and they actually overlap a little bit, and two infrared missile launch detectors. Using interferometry, these sensors can identify a track direction with less than one degree error, which is enough to provide a completely passive fire solution to the weapons. The output is also integrated with the data of a library of threats and the other sensors to be presented to the pilot in the integrated way that we have discussed before. The Spectra Suite may command automatically uh, chaffs and flare dispensers, but curiously again, uh, no doubt the coil is planned to be integrated with the plane. 
From the countermeasure point of view, the system has three scrambling channels, whose performance is rigorously secret, but unconfirmed news reports something they call active stealth. It is believed to be a form of active radar eco cancellation, but however, all of this has to be taken with a large, large pinch of salt, like everything in the world of electronic warfare. The Rafale is a very advanced combat plane, probably is the most technologically advanced and capable uh, overall among the generation 4.5 planes and it is very close to the fifth generation. However, it is also the result of a particular approach to combat slightly different than the American doctrine. There are interviews with French pilots where it is clear how their mindset is focused on trying different solutions until they prevail. Thinking out of the box for them is their natural condition and it is what they train for. A French pilot is expected to break the rules and ignore the procedures if it is necessary to come out on top. A French Navy Rafale pilot in an interview released a few years ago said something very interesting. I am obviously just translating and paraphrasing and even a bit dramatizing. There are thousands of people who work for me to put me in the position to take off and execute a mission. But there's only a handful of planes and a handful of pilots. We will always be outnumbered. We will have only a thin margin or none at all. If we do not act smart, if we do not act unexpected, if we don't throw the linear course of action out of the window, we will lose and we can't afford to lose because there will be nobody else to replace us. The thousands of people who work for me expect me to win. So if you like this video, I'm sure you will find interest in the videos beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And please consider supporting the channel on Patreon and subscribe star, that would be amazing. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.